tired of that same old, same old breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Same old tasting scrambled eggs, burger, that dinner steak, ribs, or pork chops. Why not add a little bit of spice or just a touch of heat to make the difference? Change that scrambled egg with a little bit of Johnny Fabulous's John Cena Sr.'s Million Dollar Jalapeno Hot Sauce. Great on burgers, steaks, chops, and those barbecued ribs. And APB, American Protection Bureau, voted number one best on Long Island for all your security needs. Call 631-390-9050. That's 631-390-9050. APB. Yeah, Greg is a good guy. You know, I never had any problem with Greg. I remember the last yeah. time you were in the studio, the, uh, well, the only time I think he was in the studio. He was in the mm -hmm. studio one time. You know, I, I still think about this. And, yes, I'm going to do this in your voice. China ruined the Intercontinental title. Is this true? Do you still really feel this way about this, that when you saw China with the Intercontinental title, you were like, fuck this title? Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, the beginning and the end for... Uh... For the WWF, as far as I was concerned, yeah, she could probably legitimately beat everybody in the WWF at that time. Probably. <laughs> and uh, so uh, maybe that's why McMahon put the belt on her. I don't mm. know. No, it's a it was a farce. It was a, a joke, you know. Uh, see, he he was woke before you had to be woke. And uh, <laughs> Vince. Vince of all yeah, people uh, was woke before. <laughs> wow, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So Ken, uh, Ric Flair came out with a documentary on Peacock. It was called Being Ric Flair. A uh, wonderful documentary, but he tells a story on how he actually becomes a professional wrestler is because of the great Ken Patera. Can you wow. tell that story from your end? Well, yeah, I, uh, when I moved back to uh, Minnesota from Portland, Oregon, I walked in this bar called George's in the Park. And there was a kid uh, uh, sitting at a table just inside the door. Turned out to be the bouncer. Or the, back in those days, this was a pretty classy place. We called them doormen. You know, we didn't call them bouncers. And uh, so I asked the doorman, I said, uh, where's your cigarette machine? He said, right over there. So I went over, and put uh, 50 cents in the machine, pulled the plunger, out pops my Salem lights. What? Ah, Salem lights. As I, as I stood up, there's the, the doorman was standing right next to me. And I looked at him, I said, yeah. He says, are you Ken Patera? I said, yeah. He said, I knew it. I saw you on the Wild World of Sports a couple of weeks ago. And I said, oh, yeah, uh, the World Championships and weightlifting. He said, yeah. And he said, what the hell are you doing in here? I said, well, there's an old saying. Everybody's got to be somewhere <laughs> at some time. Here I am. <laughs> and anyway, uh, so I went, I said, I see there's a bar in the back here. I said, I don't want to go to the, the nightclub up front. They had a big nightclub up front, dinner theater and everything. And I just wanted to get a couple beers. So I, he said, yeah, go, go back to the Red Dog Saloon. And it was a working man's bar, so that's where uh, all the guys come in the back after work. You know, they have mud and shit on their boots, and uh, <laughs> their Levi's are torn, their shirts are torn. And anyway, I went back there, ordered a couple beers. Next thing, you know, this is getting late by that time. So uh, next thing I know, 
here comes this blonde haired kid again. And uh, I look up from the table. He said, Mr. Pater, you mind if I sit down and have a beer with you? I said, no, go ahead. And that was Ric Flair. That, that's when I found out his name. And uh, I said, yeah. I said, how long have you worked here? He said, about a year. I said, do you like it? He says, yeah, it's a great place to work. And uh, so anyway, uh, uh, we got to know each other, you know, we got drunk <laughs> <laughs> in the Red Dog Saloon. <laughs> nice. And so I told him that I was staying with my brother, Jack. Uh, Jack was defensive line coach for the Minnesota Vikings at the time. And uh, that I was, uh, I come back uh, to uh, train for the Olympic Games. Now, this is like 1969 or 1970. 1970, I believe it was. And so Rick, Rick and I, uh, uh, he gave me his phone number. I gave him my my brother's phone number. We wound up uh, getting together and uh, uh, going down uh, uh, to a couple gyms. He, you know, him being from Minnesota, he knew where all the gyms were. But they were all bodybuilding gyms and, you know, health spas and stuff. I said, I said, uh, Rick, I need a, a real gym, you know, where I can lift big weights. And he says, well, there's none of those, but there's a guy that lives over in North Minneapolis. His name is... Uh, Mel Hennessy. At that time, Mel Hennessy had the world record in the bench press in the 242 pound class. And so we went over there, I started talking to Mel. And uh, he says, Yeah, you can train here. A, his gym was a converted double car garage. He had it insulated with uh, cardboard. And uh, because uh, if anybody's been in uh, Minnesota during the winter, they'll realize that it gets cold. And he had a heater in there. A heat crank. Uh, that thing would be 80 degrees in that uh, two-car garage. But it was plenty big enough for power lifting and Olympic lifting. And uh, so, yeah, it was a good place to train. Yeah, beautiful. And then Rick would come over and uh, he had a, a membership at a sports and health club. And he went over there. I used to go over there with him once in a while, you know, jump in the steam room and the whirlpool and stuff. Mm. That's a good looking guy. Yeah. I think that patch says USA has the Olympic emblem, uh, the rings underneath. Love it. Yeah. Do you still have a relationship yeah, I know a with lot Rick? Of when I was in Ken, do you Go still ahead. talk to Ric Flair? Yeah, I just talked to him about a week ago. Can yeah, I ask you a I, question? I, Can I ask you one question? He wrote the he wrote the forward <coughs> to my book. And I want to get back I want to get back to your Very book nice. right after this question. Very nice. When he lost his son Reed, did you reach out to him? I tried to, I couldn't get through to him. Really? Mm. Yeah, I, I could. Sometimes I called it. Sometimes it takes me uh, a couple of weeks to get a hold of him. Mm. And uh, he likes to text. I don't text, you know, and uh, so it's, it's hard to uh, get any line of communication going. But yeah, I, I do talk to, <clears throat> talk to Rick and, uh, He'll call me or I'll call him. Yeah. So uh, the last time he called me, he called me from a gym down in Tampa, Florida. And he was training with a bunch of young guys in their 20s. They didn't believe that he knew me. <laughs> and so he says, oh, you want proof? I'll call it. So he calls me. He says, Kenny, I'm in a, uh, a gym down here in Tampa. These guys don't believe that I know you. I said, well, I'll put the little pricks on. I'll straighten them out. <laughs> so he put, 
He put the ringleader on, and I talked to him for a couple of minutes. I said, yeah, you're talking to the real Ken Patera? And I said, you better be treating that old man, Ric Flair, uh, right. Otherwise, I'm going to come down there and slap the swinging full Nelson on all of you. <laughs> and so yeah, it, it, it was a great conversation that sure. we had. So, yeah.